Hi everybody, Teresa again. Thought I would come on here. I just got done watching um, Angie Lupus for Life, uh, a video about uh, how to cope with being in institutional institutionalized. That's a hard word for somebody who's hearing impaired and have a speech impediment to say. <laughs> but um, and I thought I would do do my own uh, video on that. First, I got to say, girlfriend, <laughs> you made me laugh. Basically, the deer nail biter, bite away, my friend. <laughs> that was good. I was involuntarily committed one time. I tried to commit suicide. And... I was almost very successful. Uh, the paramedics say uh, ten more minutes, and and that I would it would have been too late. And that was from taking a deliberate drug overdose. Pre pre prescription drugs. I cannot talk today. <sighs> so after they got done working on me forever at the hospital and all that fun stuff, you know, of course I got. 72 hour uh, mandated hold and I learned a lot while I was in there but unfortunately the only mental hospital that we have here mainly deals with um, uh, addictions drug addictions narcotic addiction so most of the classes are geared toward that very little are geared toward just depression and uh, suicidal thoughts, um, or if you're bipolar or whatever. But I totally agree. The best thing you can do is cooperate. Even if you don't agree with everything they're saying. You know. Because, you know, of course we don't. I mean, some of it, quite frankly, I think some of it, you know, um... It's just a bunch of bullshit. Um, and then some of it's really good, good, good advice and really good steps and and really good um, optimistic and positive and stuff. But then some of it you can tell it's like you've got that out of a textbook. I've taken that psychology class, you know. So, but I mean, cooperate, cooperate, attend all the classes, uh, you know, just get along with everybody, you know, and, you know, even, even if you're mad and stuff, you know, like you said, don't, don't start anything, don't fight with anybody, just cooperate, um, don't do what I do, did either, I got in trouble, girlfriend, I got in trouble, <laughs> Okay, I'm really bored. I'm sitting outside of, you know, out on the bench. Not outside, but in the hallway on a bench. Okay, the woman was singing and dancing and talking to herself and having a good time doing it. Yes, I confess, I'm kind of jealous at this point in time. But anyway, she comes and she says, by me. Well... I'm used to being a smart ass, and I'm used to people knowing I'm a smart ass, and I'm used to people not taking what I say literally. So I sit there and I just start staring up at this, up at the ceiling. And she goes, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm waiting for the mothership to come." She went and she told all the other patients. In our ward, who then all believed me, who then went and told the staff, <laughs> and <laughs> I got called into the uh, director's uh, the doctor's office, and I was told that I shouldn't should do that because the people would really believe me. Yeah.
that's probably why they only held me for two two days instead of this three days. After two days, they let me out. They're like, go home. I was told I, I, I wasn't messed up enough to stay any longer that they had patients that could bene better benefit their time than me. You know, I could just do outpatient therapy, so whatever, you know. <laughs> I do have to say one thing is, is it being more serious is a great alternative to other than killing yourself or doing harm to yourself or somebody else. Um, um, it's a great place to get all the stress off of you because you don't have to worry about in my case caring for anybody else in the entire world when you're in there just yourself and like she said make a list of who is allowed to come see you and who is not and who's allowed to call you and who is not because this is your time you know this is your time just to to think about yourself in your head and your heart not everybody else's you know and I had one doctor tell me he said don't be ashamed to be to have been in there and he was my personal physician at that point in time he said I even did a voluntary commit when I was in med school he said for about a week because I needed that time to step away from real life he said it's okay to take a break from real life if you need to and just concentrate on yourself and fix what's going on with you and you know so never be ashamed I and one of the things that I hate is everybody it feels like we should be so ashamed that we ever needed help now if you have a broken leg you go in and you get it set or you have surgery if you have something wrong with you um, you know something wrong with your heart you go in to a cardiologist you know etc but if we have something wrong up here we feel ashamed in my family there's massive amounts of suicide also massive amounts of alcoholism some drug uh, addiction so much mental illness depression bipolar schizophrenia everything but it is still a dirty little secret we mustn't talk about it you know my parents reaction when they found out was not love or care or concern it was they were ashamed that I had been on a 72 hour hold and then anytime I would be upset about anything that was going on within the family dynamics you know I was told well you're fucked in the head that's their favorite thing you're fucked in the head use of the weapon not you know this is a family a family uh, there's such a family history of it I mean we're talking going back to five generations you know and you know it's, it's you know but it's a dirty little secret and it's like why if we were upfront about it and we let people know that they don't have to be ashamed of it they can talk about it so, you know people people might come come to you and say you know I think I might need a little help I'm really struggling I'm really depressed so please don't please my message to you guys 
suffer from depression because I do. Um, you know, I have to work really hard on it. Um, and I'm on a, a mild antidepressant anxiety pill. I also take St. John's work. I also do uh, the the um, UV lighting. Well, actually, the sunlight. I make sure I get enough of it, or else I get seem to get uh, more depressed because I do have seasonal depression also, um, as well as the clinical, and as well as I'm bipolar too, mild. Um, and I have anxiety and PTSD, um, is don't be ashamed, please. And anytime anybody wants to talk to me about it, like I said, always below, you know, always message me, I'll give you my name for, for Facebook, or you can go back to my daily vlogs, I always have the date on them. Uh, and that's how you can tell they're just a daily vlog. And there's always my link to my Facebook page. You're more than welcome to become friends with me and we'll talk about it. You know, let's help each other. Because the rate of suicide in this country is just astronomical and it's got to end. So anyway, I just wanted to respond to that and uh, don't be nervous, Angie. You did a great job. Mine's probably, you know, icky too because I just kind of winged it too. I wanted to respond. I thought it was a brave topic and a great one. And everybody, don't be afraid to talk about it, please. Because there's nothing to be ashamed about. Okay? This is a hard world. This is a hard world at times. People are very cruel. And, you know, I don't want to lose any more beautiful people to suicide. So anyway, it's a great big storm coming out, so I'm going to bust out of here. So uh, remember that I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.